and welcome to this Analyst Angle episode. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. And today we are talking innovation with generative AI, which is a topic pretty much on everyone's minds today. And we're going to be exploring the AWS Generative AI Innovation Center and discussing the ways that AWS is bringing customers along on their individual Gen AI innovation journeys. The AWS Innovation Center was designed to pair customers with AWS science and strategy experts with deep expertise in AI and ML and Gen AI techniques and all, all with a view of helping customers immerse themselves in all things Gen AI. The program helps customers do a variety of things, including identifying new use cases for Gen AI based on the business value they can deliver, which is kind of the holy grail of all of this. Imagine new applications of Gen AI that customers might not yet have explored or considered to help address their needs, and then also to learn how to integrate Gen AI into existing applications and workflows. What I have shared here, though, is just the tip of the iceberg. And my guest today is Tamor Rashid, who is the Managing Director of Gen AI Innovation and Delivery at AWS. Tamor, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Hi, Shelley. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so glad to be here and look forward to talking to you. Oh, I've been looking forward to this conversation all week. So. Before we dive in, though, to the Generative AI Center, I'd love for you to share a little bit about your career journey and your backstory. I know that you've done some amazing work, not only with AWS, but with Oracle and Microsoft and with a handful of startups along the way. So share with us, if you would, a little bit more about that career backstory. Yeah, I'd love to share that. You know, I started off my career actually at Oracle, where uh, as a computer science major, I graduated from the University of Texas at Austin. And I started my career there at Oracle in a variety of roles, really started off in engineering and then moved into product management and then finally business development. So I got to see sort of the full functional life cycle of a given product, which happened to be the business intelligence products. Yeah. Um, after that, a new chapter began for me in 2008 when I joined AWS and it was very, very early on. Um, AWS in its true sense was a startup back then. And I got the unique opportunity to spend about 10 years at AWS, where I eventually led the go-to-market team for the entire platform. And by the time that I had left AWS in 2018, it was a $25 billion run rate business with about 75 different web services. And that's spanning everything from infrastructure, data, middleware, and a lot of the emerging services like the AI services. And after uh, leaving AWS, I almost took about six and a half years and I got a tour of the outside world from AWS. And so I spent three years at Microsoft. I established and led the customer success teams for Azure Data and AI, yeah. which was a fantastic experience for me. A, a new cultural setting for me to experience as well too after being 10 years at AWS. And then I spent some time with a unicorn company called Redis. And uh, in those three years, I uh, helped them get ready for their IPO. But at the same time, I started incubating their AI business, which was an emerging business for them. And that's what led me to Generative AI, where I had the unique opportunity to bring the Redis Vector database to market. Uh, Chat GPT happened and the Generative AI wave started, and we were well positioned to catch that wave. And after doing that, um, I had the unique opportunity to work very closely with startups. And so I took uh, almost a year and just advised and consulted with a number of emerging AI startups across the entire stack, all the way from sort of the foundational layers, uh, the data layer and application layer. And that was a very unique opportunity for me. And then earlier in the summer, um, I got a call from AWS and they said, hey, we'd love to have you back. We have this uh, big initiative that we're doing around generative AI and the innovation center. And so here I am about three months in to my new role here. Three months in baptism by fire, but it, you know, you've done some amazing things along the way. And that's why I wanted to make sure and highlight them because you have certainly been immersed in the AI and the Gen AI space for a very long time, which is pretty cool, especially yeah. today, right? Absolutely. No, it's great. It's been a fantastic experience and, you know, it's a very evolving space. And so every week there's something new. 
And so there's a lot of learning that's happening at the same yeah. time. You know, I always just tell people um, when I'm describing what it is that I do for a living, one of the things that I think serves me so well is that I have always been a change agent in my career and um, coming into situations and, you know, teaching people about sort of, you know, whether it's the digital transformation part of their journeys, or now it's focused in many ways on leveraging AI for business value and things like that. But I'm always so grateful that I am wired in such a way that I love change. And it sounds like you are as well, because that serves us really well. It does, you know, it always puts us in a position where we have to learn, we have to, you know, stretch out of our comfort zones. Yeah. And in doing that is when we really bring the breakthroughs. And mm -hmm. with emerging technologies like cloud computing back in, you know, uh, 15 years ago, it was a new thing for many people. And we're living that today with generative AI. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So now I would love to explore a little bit about the AWS Generative AI and Innovation Center, how it came to be established and what the motivation was behind creating it. Definitely. So the Generative AI Innovation Center started in June of 2023. And it was a very unique opportunity for us where we said, hey, look at this is an emerging technology and it's so important for us to invest in human capital to help customers navigate, understand, and more importantly, figure out how to use it. And th that's the whole in inception of the Innovation Center, which is a program to connect customers and partners with AWS machine learning and AI professionals around the world uh, so that they can guide them through a step-by-step -step process of ideating, identifying use cases, and then ultimately implementing them so that customers can get production value from Gen AI. Um, we started the um, Innovation Center in 2023, but its roots actually go back to 2017 when we started the ML Solutions Lab. And so as we saw the technology evolving, uh, customers' requirements evolving, we were well positioned to catch the generative AI wave yeah. with this investment. And now it's grown to hundreds of employees globally. Um, we're about 500 folks that are, you know, globally distributed. Uh, we've been helping customers and very pleased to say that we've helped customers realize production value, uh, such as Nike, DoorDash, Booking.com, SK Telecom, Toyota, just to name a few. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so talk with me a little bit, if you would, about how the Gen AI Innovation Center and the team there collaborates with other teams or groups within Amazon and AWS. I mean, this is no small organization. So I'd love to know how, how you all work together. Absolutely. So there's a lot of connection touch points within the rest of the AWS teams. The best way to look at the Innovation Center is we're a very specialized group of individuals. And so we're inclusive of strategists, scientists, machine learning engineers as well. And then individuals that have had experience productionizing um, systems and applications. And so we work very closely with our account teams uh, where we actually do leverage the relationships that we have with customers to them. We work very closely with our partner teams as well too. So part of what we're doing here as we go and do breakthroughs for customers and as we learn about the intricacies of identifying use cases and bringing them into production, we also work with our partner organizations so that we can take this knowledge and disseminate it uh, across our partner ecosystem. Um, for us, that's a very important element of how we intend to expand the go-to-market efforts, but at the same time, how we intend to scale our learnings through our partner ecosystem. Yeah. We also work very, very closely with our support teams too, because one of the things to realize is it's so important that once you get into production, you know how to manage the life cycle post-production. And so there's a variety of teams on the support side that we work with. Well, that makes perfect sense. And I love hearing with, you know, I love hearing about extending the, this knowledge and these learnings throughout the partner ecosystem, because that's such an important part of Amazon and AWS and all of that. So I think that's, that's really attractive and important. Yep, absolutely. It, it certainly is. Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to the key areas of focus, um, 
at the Innovation Center. I'd love to know if you would just give me an idea, some, a sampling of some of the kinds of Gen AI projects and initiatives that you're working on today. Yeah, definitely. You know, every week I meet so many customers that come to our Executive Briefing Center. And the two most frequently asked questions that I get after we talk about the Innovation Center is, what should I do and where do I begin? <laughs> and this is fundamentally one of the things that we do in the Innovation Center is number one, educating customers about what they can do. We learn about the use cases that they can identify. How do they prioritize those use cases across their business imperatives? And then from there, we identify one or two proof of concepts that we can do with a customer, ultimately to show them the art of the possible. Uh, it could be a simple virtual chatbot. It could be an assistant. Uh, we want to pick something that within four to six weeks, a customer can actually see that art of the possible with an application, with data of theirs, right? Yeah. From there, what we've seen is some customers then like to take that a step further where they say, hey, I love this, but I have a large set of proprietary data and I want to fine tune my model or even pre-train my model on my specific data. And that's one other aspect that the Innovation Center brings is we have a model optimization and customization team. And this is a group of very highly specialized scientists that have experience with model tuning, uh, uh, pre-training as well too. Yeah. And then for some of our more advanced customers, we bring this capability so that they can really truly see their data and their proprietary data being included in the generative AI responses. But it doesn't end there. The third thing that we provide is what we call helping customers establish a center of excellence around generative AI. So as customers see the art of the possible, then they actually get into more complex use cases. They're thinking about it holistically by saying, we want to have a center of excellence where we can take these two use cases and expand them to 20, sometimes even 200 use cases. So um, they've identified many use cases that they can apply generative AI to. It's also about making sure that the right foundational elements are in place, the data foundations, security, data uh, privacy, and this broader category of responsible AI, which is really setting up the company to understand the risks associated with it and how to mitigate those risks, and then ultimately figuring out how to budget for generative AI. And so we have a FinOps focus as well too. So the center of excellence is very inclusive for a customer to establish yeah. generative AI for the long term. You know, I have many, many conversations about this on a regular basis. And the one thread that, that uh, really combines them all is that focusing on establishing a center of excellence or an AI council or whatever it is you want to call it within your organization is so fundamentally important. And, you know, really understanding that this is not just about diving in and getting started. It's about so many other things in terms of, you know, you mentioned responsible AI and having guardrails in place and data. What does your data look like? What is your data management practices? You know, if we don't have good data, we're not going to make any progress with generative AI, right? And so all of these things are such an important part of the equation. And I'm not at all surprised that this is the kind of guidance that you provide customers, but it's such a, that foundational part of it is so important before you dive in and get started actually, you know, creating use cases and doing things, I think. Yes, I would agree. And I would actually even add to that, Shelley, by saying one of the most important things about generative AI is how it introduces behavioral change for the personas that it's empowering, right? Yeah. And this is one thing that once you establish a generative AI application, uh, it's it, it touches so many organizations across the line of businesses that it's a behavioral change and an adoption effort too as well. And that's one thing that we help customers out with too is how to take that technology and then now not just make it for a few, but then how do you make it more ubiquitous across the organization? Right. 
the AI literacy, yeah, <laughs> right? Absolutely. You know, I mean, we've been talking about for so long, I've been talking about things like, you know, creating a, the importance of creating a culture of innovation so that people embrace change, you know, and we're not the, you and I and people like us who love change and learning, continuous learning and all of that, so that we're not the outliers and that people understand that this is the path to success with your, with your own career, with the organizations that you work with. It's, you know, embracing a culture of innovation, embracing a culture of security so that people understand that, you know, everyone is responsible for data security within an organization. And today, you know, creating a, an environment within your organization so that people, so that AI literacy is a thing and that people don't feel like this is something that other people within the organization are doing but I don't know anything about it and it makes me nervous or I feel excluded or whatever. So I think that's a really important part of this equation as well. It, it definitely is. And what we've seen in the customers that we've talked to, that it's a multifaceted endeavor, right? Yeah. It has so many dimensions to it and it touches not only all the way down at the infrastructure level, but then all the way to the persona who might not be as technical, right? And so educating them about the vocabulary, the terminology, uh, the implications, and then oftentimes, you know, there's there's a bit of fear, there's a bit of uncertainty with yeah. it, right? Um, giving leaders the right talking points so that they could help their organizations navigate that is actually equally important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it makes perfect sense. So I cannot imagine customers not finding this incredibly appealing with a view toward leveraging the power of AWS to jumpstart their generative AI journeys. So how do customers make this happen? How do customers engage with the AWS Gen AI Innovation Center? Yep. So it starts off with um, a series of ideation efforts, right? Okay. We identify what are those business imperatives that the company is most laser focused on? Yeah. And how do we work backwards from those business imperatives to really say, hey, what business outcome are you trying to drive, right? Is it revenue generating? Is it cost cutting? Is it risk mitigation? What that allows us to do is it allows us to identify one, two, maybe even three use cases that right. we can go and pursue. And a team of strategists and scientists essentially go build a proof of concept. And this takes four to six weeks, typically, you know, just depending on the nature of the data and the application and the scope. And once they're able to show that art of the possible, we can very quickly then work with the teams to get it into production, right? Okay. Um, we were heavily focused on in POCs this past year. And the pattern that we saw is as we were doing these POCs, we really had to get the production aspects in place. And so now we have a production first mindset with how we ideate and how we show the art of the possible so that the time between idea realization to production realization and production value is as minimal as possible. Yeah. And so we've leveraged a variety of reusable assets in the team that help facilitate that. And once that happens, customers can start seeing the business value out of that effort. Got it. So is there any kind of a qualification criteria that a customers need, you know, does a customer need to be an organization of a certain size, anything like that, that plays a role here? So we support customers of all sizes, all the way from emerging startups to mid-sized companies and our enterprises as well, too. Okay. Um, as an innovation center, though, we look at a few qualification criteria, right? Number one, we really want to ensure that there is a strong business outcome that customers are trying to drive out sure. of the engagement, right? Uh, number two, we also want to sure, ensure that there's some level of data literacy, some level of AI literacy. That way we know what sort of resources and how many we need to bring to the table. Yeah. Right? Uh, to the extent that teams early on are bringing in security experts or uh, cloud operations folks as well. That gives us good indication that there's quite a bit of seriousness to take this idea and actually put it into production. And then, you know, we look at, you know, data readiness, um, security, data literacy, sure. some of those things to help us qualify as we do the engagement. All right. I, that makes perfect sense. 
So Tamar, one of my favorite things about these conversations is getting beyond the nuances and getting into some real world examples. Can you share some examples of how customers have successfully engaged with the, uh, with the Gen AI Innovation Center? Yeah, you know, there, there are many examples that we have. Uh, you know, I'll highlight a couple for us today. Uh, one example that I really like is the example of DoorDash. Well, I'm a, I'm a big user of DoorDash. You know, my kids are using it a lot too. <laughs> and we work with DoorDash to revolutionize the onboarding and support process for their Dashers, who are basically their delivery agents. And the JNAIC team uh, partnered with folks from DoorDash and we built a service center assistant uh, using Amazon Bedrock and SageMaker. Okay. And what that allowed is delivery agents could use the service assistant to sign up, inquire about tax documents, handle pay-related items effortlessly. And through this service assistant that was built, DoorDash saw about a 50% reduction in call volumes. And they estimated about a $20 million annual savings just by enabling that. So that was a really exciting use case. And, um, you know, every time I use DoorDash, I just feel so happy that we were able to give them that business value. That's, that's funny. You feel a connection cool. when you're placing that DoorDash order to making all of this possible, right? Yeah, no, it's really Love exciting. It. And then when I, when I t tell my kids about it, they're really excited because then they actually see the work <laughs> that we do in action, right? That's awesome. Um, the other example is um, SK Telecom, you know, and the unique thing about SK Telecom is there were about three different use cases that we supported them on. And they involved various amounts of things that were actually more complex tasks, but ultimately giving them differentiated value. So they wanted to create multiple solutions using Amazon Bedrock, and they created a personal digital assistant that actually records and transcribes customer voice and leverages on-device capabilities of the mobile phone. Uh, they were in, they were able to enhance service quality, which was great, but they actually took it a step further and we helped fine tune a model based on their proprietary data. And what this allowed them to do is create a unique model for their business needs. And that actually is helping them create a new revenue stream. The work that we did here was our model optimization team uh, worked with their uh, data science team and we fine tuned an anthropic uh, Claude 3 model. And we use a variety of different techniques. And so, what was nice about that is more complex work that we were able to do, ultimately, having, having them create a new value stream. And so, it's not a one size fits all solution, but one that we were able to really tailor to their need. That's awesome. That, and well, and you know, that's music to anyone's ears that we were able to help them create a new revenue stream, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and I, I think that's what's exciting about it is we've had examples where we've been able to help customers cut costs and well, optimize the way they do business, but at the same time, also open up these new avenues that they consider with how they engage with customers differently how they transform their product offerings. And that's really exciting. And we also have examples where we've actually helped customers upskill their employees too. And this is very big in, in emerging markets where they're looking to upskill a, a large number of their workforce. Yeah. You know, I was at an event earlier this week and, um, one of the one of the presenters in one of the keynotes said something that really resonated with me, and so I'll share it here. And I and I have a feeling you won't disagree, but what he said was that when you're working with Gen AI and trying to create use cases that add value, the focus really should not be on efficiency and and cost cutting but instead it it should be all about delivering better experiences because the rest of that comes if you get that creating better experiences part of the equation right and so it sounds like especially with your example with DoorDash you know 
what that's doing is creating better experiences for employees in the onboarding process, right? It saves time, it's efficient, all of those sorts of things. But when it comes right down to it, it's a better experience. And when you can do that across the board with your Gen AI initiatives, I think that's really an important thing here that sometimes we forget about when we're so focused on the cost savings part of the equation. That's actually a very good point. And I like to build on that is when we look at it, this, we, we say, what is the persona that we're enabling? Right. Yeah. And it is about giving the persona and the individual additional superpowers with the Gen AI app that they have. So on the giving end, you're able to have the superpower and deliver it in such a way that gives value to the receiving end. Yeah. But also on the receiving end, it's also a superpower that you're getting in return, right? And so yeah. having a persona-based way of looking at this just changes the way people look at the power of generative AI and more importantly, how they implement it into their experiences and into their products. Yeah, I agree. I think it's super important. So what do you see as the, the main differentiator of the AWS Gen AI Innovation Center? What sets what you're doing apart from what others might be doing? Well, I would say it comes to three areas. One is the expertise. Uh, our teams have had so much expertise in the early days of machine learning sure. and helping customers realize that value. And what that's allowed them to do is really ensure they have solid foundations around data, uh, security, as well as operations. Yeah. All of these three things extend into the generative AI world, right? And so that expertise uh, it takes time to really, really get familiar with that and more importantly, see that at scale. So we not only bring domain experience as it relates to generative AI and your classic machine learning and AI use cases, but at the same time, we bring this experience of running systems at scale sure, and ensuring that you know these early projects can be positioned for scale. So that's one aspect that we bring, right? The second aspect too is just the knowledge of the overall platform. Um, look at generative AI today is sometimes considered as, as, a, as a thing on the side, right? Yes. But it can't be on the side for very long. It no. really has to be part of the main fabric where you not only think about it at scale, but you also think about running in a sustainable way, not only on cost, but then also thinking about the environment as well too, because sure. after all, this is a very power heavy compute and data heavy endeavor, right? Yeah. And so our experience in that is differentiated value, our investments and in how we think about sustainability at a global scale across our data centers, it's going to be very important um, as customers really scale this thing. So that's the second thing that we bring in. The third thing that we bring in is we have industry experience. Just in helping customers over the past, you know, 20 years of running cloud in a very industry specific way, that's a natural extension that we bring to the table as well too. And so why that's important is because it helps us identify with customers, what are the business outcomes that are industry specific that we need to drive through, right? And we can then work backwards from there and make sure the tech is enabling that business value. Yeah. Well, that makes perfect sense. And to me, I, I'm a big champion of, you know, partnerships and, and really leveraging the power that, you know, collaboration with others brings. And so to me, what I find attractive is, you know, if I'm working with you and I'm in the telecom space, you know, that team, the AWS team is bringing all of those learnings from all of the work that you're doing with other telcos to the table. So I'm not having to reinvent the wheel. And while you're certainly not sharing, you know, confidential information with me as part of the process, I think you're able to help working with a trusted vendor partner like that. You're able to kind of get more quickly to the value by working alongside somebody who's already been working in that particular vertical, that particular industry. And I think that's pretty invaluable. It is. It absolutely is. And then I would just also add to that is, you know, our approach is always an approach of giving customers selection, yeah. giving them flexibility uh, while ensuring that they're getting the most value and the convenience out of what we offer. Yeah. And I, I think that just resonates very well in the generative AI space where 
people want options, you know, what model they use, what data yeah. sources they use, and, and we provide that. Yeah, I like that. Well, as we wrap the conversation, the last question I have for you is, where can people get started working with the AWS team and, and the Gen AI Innovation Center and get a jump on that ROI part of the equation that everyone seeks? How do they get started? How do they get started? Well, look at we, um, generative AI is very important to the entire organization. And so uh, all our account managers and our account executives that are interfacing with customers, uh, they can always ask about the generative AI innovation center, get us plugged in. Uh, we also have a dedicated website um, on the AWS homepage, which talks about the innovation center It explains it in detail. And through that customers can submit a request and then we'll engage uh, very quickly. And Excellent. so, uh, and then obviously we have reInvent coming. We're going to be talking a lot about generative AI, uh, the innovation center, and all the other things that we can do for customers to help them along that journey. Well, hopefully our paths will cross uh, in Vegas where those thousands of people <laughs> will be descending before we know it, uh, because I'd love to continue this conversation. So I thank you so much, Tamor Rashid from AWS Generative AI Innovation Center for joining me today, for walking me through what is clearly an amazing resource for AWS customers and their Gen AI journeys. And, you know, the ability to leverage expert help and guidance and getting to the essentials quickly and being able to deliver those bottom line business results and business value with Gen AI is, is really, again, it's the holy grail. That's what every organization seeks today. And this sounds like an amazing resource to help do just that. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I knew this was going to be a great conversation. You, of course, did not disappoint. And I so appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Shelly. It was such a pleasure. And I really appreciate you having me here. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, to our viewing and listening audience, I'm your host, Shelly Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at theCUBE Research. Thank you for joining us today here at theCUBE, your source for enterprise and emerging tech news. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.